please stand and join with me in the singing of our opening hymn, 715, Now Thank We All Our God. Just remain standing for the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Most Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all the things that you have given us. We thank you for all the talents you have bestowed upon us and the differences in us. We rejoice in our differences because through those differences, working together, we become stronger and we can do more to help those who are in need. We come to this time of thanksgiving and we ask for the blessing upon all those things that have been given us through this past year. We ask that you will enrich our hearts and minds with the message today. And as we go forth into the week, that we may carry your love and your story to those who need to hear it. We join together in the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you again to our service. In your bulletin, you will find the blue sheet or the uh, off-colored sheet, I suppose. Um, prayer list, as you can, uh, as we have reviewed this, uh, we've taken some off and we're beginning to add more back on. Uh, several of our members have had some uh, uh, unpleasant experiences, I guess is the way you would want to, to say that, but uh, we did talk to several of them by phone this past week, and uh, my case, uh, as you know, is doing okay. We talked to him. He's coming along. He's had a few setbacks, but he says he's feeling well and he's doing wi uh, fine and asks that we continue to pray with him. Ken Burkett, uh, as probably all of you or most of all of you know, fell here at the church this week and uh, he had to have some hip surgery. Uh, he broke a bone and uh, he's now in the hospital uh, and uh, he's uh, hoping to get to come home in a day or two, so please continue to pray for him. Uh, we talked to uh, Michael uh, Gitcom, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, and he's not doing real well, so we ask that we continue to keep praying for him, and of course all of those others, and we've had a few people who are now sequestered because they have uh, had uh, COVID-19 tests and some of those tests have come back positive so we have some of our members that are sequestered uh, quarantined in for a couple of weeks so we we are being affected by the world's issues that we deal with every day in life so all of those have ask us to pray for them. The list is beginning to climb back up, and that's okay. We need to keep the people uh, on our prayer list that need to be on our prayer list. And I hope you'll take this home with you and put it someplace where you'll be reminded by your bed or someplace where you uh, will remember as the days go by each day to pray for the people in our church. And I know there's many upon your heart and situations in the world in which we live that you're praying for daily. So we come to a time in our prayer life when we focus not only as the church praying uh, as the church to God, but we also focus our hearts and pray one for the other and for the situations in our life. Let us prepare our hearts as we sing our hymn of prayer. Thank you.
please join me as we pray. Father, in the moments that we gather together, in the time that we set apart to worship as the church, we pray that you would hear our prayer. Our prayer not only as we share with you individually, but the prayer of the world. As many hearts are lifted towards you around the world this day, those that are people of faith that look to you and through your spirit seek to do your will, we ask you, Father, to bless them, to put your arms of love around them, and as their prayers are lifted up, may you hear and according to your will answer those prayers. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the membership of this church. And we thank you, Father, for those who are watching today around our nation and some perhaps in other nations around the world. We ask you to bless us all as we gather as your church to hear our prayer, to listen to your spirit as it speaks to each of us and challenges us for the week ahead. And may we be willing to accept whatever challenge you have for us in sharing the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may those that we come in contact with in the week ahead by your spirit being shining through each of us be an instrument of peace. We thank you that we are able to worship and sing songs. We thank you for the scriptures that we shall hear and the message that will challenge us for the week ahead. We thank you, Father, for all you do, and many, many times there are things that you do for us that we totally forget or fail to even recognize. And so in the peaceful time we gather as your church, may our, our spirit be in tune with your spirit in a very unique way. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As later this week, we will be looking at celebrating Thanksgiving, maybe a little bit differently than we have done in the past, but we will be still celebrating in some way. And if you have really thought about the reason we have Thanksgiving, I know we have the, the celebration with the pilgrims, but that's not the, you know, we, we all hear the have heard that story, and we have told that story, and that is all true. But in Canada and the United States, though we, separ we celebrate Thanksgiving at different times, it is a celebration of harvest and other blessings that we have had in the last year. Our weekly time of stewardship in the church is also a celebration and of giving of thanks for all the blessings that we have received, not only in the past week, but in all the previous weeks.
Father, we give thanks for the offerings presented before you today. We give thanks for the offerings that have re been received by the church in this previous week. We ask that you might bless upon these monetary offerings as well as the talents each one of us have received from you. As we go forth into this next week, give us good stewardship in them so that they may be blessed to do your work. In your name we pray, amen. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle along, and I say I have nothing, but I am so wrong in my heart, I'm rejoicing, how I wish that you could see. There's a roof up above me, and I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. I know I'm not wealthy, and these clothes are not new. I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you. And to me, that's all that matters, though the world may not see. blessings on me. I've got a roof up above me and a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. And a fine family. So thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. So thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. You'll notice in your bulletins that my sermon title for today is For All Have Sinned. Whoa, preacher, what you talking about? This is Thanksgiving. 
Indeed it is. But listen to the scriptures. Jump in. Hold on. I'll get to the point. Romans. Third chapter. 21st verse starts. But now, apart from the law and righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteous of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement. His blood, effective through faith, he did this to show his righteousness because of his divine forbearance. He has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he, is just, that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. So where do I go and talk about thanksgiving? With that scripture. We are told that the Old Testament points out our sins. And the people, the Jewish people of the Old Testament who followed the laws were justified because they were following the law. But that left all of us others out there, all of us who were considered Gentiles were not included in this grace and in this love until Jesus came. And when Jesus came, he laid down his life so that we might be called the children of God and be justified. Neither the Old Testament people or us are without sin, for we all have sinned. It's not until we recognize that we have sinned and we ask for forgiveness that we come to thanksgiving. In Colossians 2, 6 through 7, it reads, So then, just as you received Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving, thankfulness, thanksgiving. There it is, thankfulness, thankfulness. Think about it. When you think about overflowing thankfulness, can you think about a cornucopia? We have cornucopias at this time of the year, and they're full of fresh fruits and vegetables and everything from the garden and things that God has given us. And so our being overflowing with thankfulness to God is like being a cornucopia for him, of all the blessings that he has given us. Dropped a set out of my ring. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is in my heart? What's in your heart? Is it complaining? Is it selfishness? Pride? Or thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the mark of a Christian. You didn't know that, did you? Thanksgiving is the mark of Christian because thanksgiving points up and out, while complaining only points back to the person who's complaining and feeds pride and dissatisfaction. Thanksgiving toward God and others fits his great commandment. To love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your being, everything, and your strength. And to love my neighbor as myself. What a better vehicle can you find in expressing love than through being thankful? I want to be full of friendliness and thanksgiving. So when somebody pokes me or something irritates me, I want to be kind and loving so what is our demeanor are we acting like the children of God who have been forgiven by his grace are we acting like thankful people come you thankful people think about it we are called to be thankful even in the worst of times and today it seems to be like the worst of times everything has changed Nothing will ever go back to the way it used to be. But that's the way it has always been. 
of all the things happening in life, change is the one and only thing that remains. Every day it changes. Nothing ever is exactly the same. So every day is a new day. And how we approach that new day, how we approach what's given to us, how we approach what life is happening, what's happening in life for us, is what marks us as a true disciples of Christ. We are called to be examples. We are called to show the world how we can handle whatever is thrown at us because Jesus is right there with us. We are called to be his disciples, his hands, his feet. So how do we handle that? How do we become thankful? I've often said we need to keep a prayer journal. You can start out with saying, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Thank you, Lord, for my breakfast. Thank you, Lord, for the heat, the cold, the whatever. Thank you, Lord, for what I'm going to wear today. It took me a long time to learn how to live in Jesus. And in living in Jesus, you ask him, Lord, what do you require of me this day? What am I to do? And then the next step is to listen, to listen. And as you practice this, it'll come to your point. What will I wear today? On the black dress. Okay, yes. You put on the black dress. I have no questions. His will be done, whatever he asks me to do. If he asks me to wear striped socks, red pants, orange top, and a pink hat, I would do it because he would have a purpose for me doing that. In all things, and all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And in doing his will, we learn to walk closer to him day by day. So I thank him for all the birds of the air. I thank him for everything, every day. I woke up this morning and our, our uh, devotional said, in all things give thanks to God and in all things you do, even, even the bad things. I had food poisoning, poisoning once upon a time. I pray it never comes back to me. But I was so ill. And spent my time between the necessary room and my bed. And each time I was challenged, I would say, oh, Lord, here we go again. And after a couple of times of saying that, oh, Lord, here we go again, I was filled with a wee because it was coming to an end. And when I learned to rest in him, when I learned to open my hands and let it go, I was able to sleep. And that's the same thing with everything else, else that happens in life. When we are closer to God and we find our rest in Jesus Christ, he will give us the way to keep on keeping on. A lot of us are concerned about the virus. We're not as afraid as we were when we first heard about this. We know that it's a lot like other things that have happened in life, and there's been similar situations that have happened all down through the course of history. And if you're a history major, you remember the plague. You remember typhoid Mary. You remember the pandemic of 1819. You remember things that have happened all down through the course of time. But you also, if you look back, you'll be able to see Jesus' footprints wherever you have been, wherever you think back. And it has been. You will see Jesus' footprints because he shows us the way. He shows us the way to handle how bad it is or how good it is. In all things, you give thanks to the Lord. So, come, you thankful people. Come. Bow down and praise the Lord with thanksgivings. Thanksgiveness. Thanks. Back up. Come, you thankful people. Bow down and praise the Lord with thankfulness for life, for love, for liberty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our closing hymn, or this closing hymn for this part, our hymn of invitation. And that is, Come Ye Thankful People. So please rise, let us sing.
And here we are again. This is our Thanksgiving communion. This is when we come with grateful hearts and receive what Jesus has prepared for us, the cup and the bread, symbols of his love for us. Come, all who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and let us share the Lord's Supper. Will you join us singing together our hymn of communion? Please join me in prayer. Lord, we come into your presence now seeking to share in communion with you and all Christians around the world. The bread we break reminds us we are always with thee, with thee to guide us. The cup we will lift before you is a cup of reconciliation a visible reminder of the love that holds all things together. As you have made peace between heaven and earth by the blood of Jesus on the cross, help us become the peacemakers here on earth. In your name we pray. Amen. In the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. After giving thanks, he shared with his disciples, as we share today, saying, This bread represents my body, broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Likewise, and after supper, he took the cup, and he lifted it up, and we thank you, Father God, for the cup again today. We thank you for Jesus, and in his name we remember and we drink his cup of salvation. Thank you, Father God, for the moment, for having Thanksgiving with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, not only for today and the coming week, but forevermore. Amen. Amen.